begin as I should to offer all love and respect to the great spirit that made this day and give us not all the important but humble part in it. All respect also to our Ainawa, the sacred lands of Hawaii, special respect to this land of cool law. And for and thanks to you for what you All respect to our Ali who took care of us and left a legacy for us, we must take care of. Respect also to our kupuna, those who have passed on and who now sleep the long summers and winters too, those who yet live to guide us to the wisdom, if we are wise enough to listen. Respect to our, uh, our current generation, to our field, to the leaders of this organization, particularly I recognize the senior Aloha, the Aloha, and all those of you who are our students. And respect to all of you who are leaders in your own family, in your own community, and to all others who may be within sound of my voice, with the air from the place where the sun rises, at the place that our ancestors called Taitiku, or from the place where the sun sets into the Red Sea in the west, at the place we call Tahitiboy. I'm not reading to you all. I want to thank you for the classes that are. That you had tremendously interesting adjustment. I watched one leg short, you make adjustment, the leg go wrong. In my youth, there was a part of me that I could have used that adjustment. <laughs> and it wasn't my leg. <laughs> In any event, I'm grateful for, for the, the, uh, that which has gone before me in terms of the what has been passed on. Right? I'm going to talk about leadership today because it's kind of my thing and I've been practicing it, teaching it for decades. But before I do, it does me a bit uh, because my daughter once told me, Dad, you're getting old and the gap between you and the people you teach is higher and wider and wider. They have no idea what you know, where you got it from. So talk a little bit about yourself so they get some perspective. So please indulge me. I'm not talking about myself to be arrogant. Um, I know you'll listen anyway. And you invited me. So I'm not worried about that. But what I want you to do is get an idea of context. Because what I think is going to talk to you about leadership, the things that come together, that I have put together in my own way, they didn't come out of the book. And I have educated, you got educated. Right? So, I grew up in Kulio Valley, and that's the valley between Haina and Haina and New Valley, Kulio. And it opens up on the road bay. That's the area I grew up. Uh, my mom is Chinese. She traces her ancestry back to Chinese missionaries that came in and went to Kauai. Uh, she's a wonderful, brilliant lady. She got out of high school in the 1930s when she was 15. She graduated in 1937. From the University of Hawaii when she was 19. By the time she was 21, around 1939, she had a master's degree in microbiology. Rare. Poor uh, Chinese family, no father. The mother was a poor school teacher who embalmed bodies at night to help pay their education. My dad, on the other hand, Hawaiian Chinese, German, born in Honolulu, by the time he was eight, he moved to here. To hero I. 13 kids in the family, 10 of them are boys. We got boys in our family. I got nine grandsons, all boys. I call them the boys. Right. So he uh, ends up going to the University of Hawaii. He's a good athlete, 5 foot 5, 145 pounds. First All American. Football player, honorable man, the University of Hawaii, 1935. At that height, right. You know why? Because they got on the boat, they sailed to uh, Los Angeles, and they played UCLA in the Coliseum, 1935. He's a sophomore. From that performance alone, Grandland Rice, the great sports writer, the head of the All American Board of Football, when he named All American that year, said, and oh, by the way, this Hawaiian kid I saw, go make him an honorable mention. Run the kickoff back on the My dad, 
is a trivia question in the UH football season. Who holds a record for UH football for the longest kickoff return? And my grandkid says, Oh, but look, 103 yards. And you know why he's going to hold it? Because they only measure now. So I'm going to go get it well. <laughs> Senior year, he's captain of the football, baseball, and basketball team. He's president of the student body. He married the Chinese beauty queen, that's my mom. Unfortunately, attributes sometimes skip generations. <laughs> <laughs> but that's my background, mom and elder. That's where I come from in terms of my first teacher. Okay, so I'm going to come in my school, go to Michigan State University. I'm 17 years old. It's cold. Oh, it's cold. I don't know better. No, but they don't tell you, don't take eight o'clock classes in the winter. <laughs> and I'm from away. I don't know that. So I'm taking an eight o'clock anthropology class on the other side of campus, which, by the way, is two miles and nine miles. We added all of the agricultural stuff. Two miles by nine miles, no car. I get up, zero to 40, right? And look out the window. Snowy boy. The Red Cedar River, it goes in summer. The kids are going to class. Book bags. Oh, no, no, no. Skinny. Look out the window. And I look out the window and say, I'm not going to be in that movie. I'm not going to class. The bottom line there is, I spent a lot of time in my dorm, learning to shoot pool. I once ran, this is true, I once ran, uh, ran two racks of nine ball, but that. I became the dorm ping pong champion, and my two roommates flunked out because we fucked around. But I somehow made it through college with a degree in physical education, a minor in English. And I got a philosophy, which means uh, by my degrees, I, I was qualified to coach and teach physical activity while I was writing poetry and reading literature and pondering the meaning of life. <laughs> That's my education. I did a lot of things in my youth. Some of them were useful. For instance, I once went hunting, shot at a bird and hit a cow. <laughs> Both the bird and the cow survived. Uh, I got out of school, became a school teacher. And by actual count, I've had 32 paying jobs. I'm not done yet, I haven't retired yet. And nobody's fired me, so I guess I'm doing all right. I've been a janitor and a judge, a maintenance man, a mentor. I've sold airline reservations. I've sold refreshments in the circuits. I've paved roads, guided prisoners, taught and coached in public schools. I worked in an automobile, automobile factory, a pineapple cannery. Uh, I also learned to try to crack open a safe. Um, and done too many things. I was drafted into the army when I was only married a year. Ended up 20 years of sergeant in Vietnam. Uh, Live 35 minute combat soldier. I shot at too many times. I hit once. But you know what? I'm still here. The bottom line for the combat thing is the three enemy soldiers who try to kill me, they are dead. I'm still here. Okay. That's all that counts for me. <laughs> I'm sorry for them. That's all that counts for me. <clears throat> Martial arts, took it up in college when I was 19. I ended up in a third degree black belt in Taekwondo. I'm a seventh degree black belt in Aikido. I still teach after 42 years. And you know about that. Don't work in I got into law school. I decided to go to law school after I was teaching. Okay. Now, how does a guy that almost flunks out of college with a 2.1 grade point average get into law school? That's another story. But I'm not supposed to be in law school. The year I, I applied in 1973, the 1974 class, there were 750 applicants for the English law school. They only took 75. 
One out of ten, that is. You can ask me some other time how I talked my way into law school. But I did get in, I fact, the 12 became a student court judge. And uh, for the last 22 years, I've been a the New York Court Among the uh, things I've done, which uh, may or may not be useful, uh, survivor training, I yanked the head off a live chicken, cooked it, and ate it, all played a lizard, because we didn't have anything else to eat. I had been stalked in the tall, dry grass, elephant grass, by a tiger. I came within two feet of being trampled by a stampeding elephant. I leaned back in a bamboo thicket about this low, and a bamboo viper would have bit me on the neck, which would kill me, because there, no, there was no landing zone in the jungle, so they could evacuate me from my radio telephone operator for the most part. They took out this bone knife that was used for the most time. Wow. And after that, I watched where I, where I sat. And the last thing I'm going to do is, you know, we follow who is it, teachers. My actual farm, well, just, just take my dad's side. Ten boys, they're all athletes, coaches, and teachers. Call me Kukui's side, I have 37 first cousins. 37 first cousins out of the 13 kids. Almost all 37 teachers, coaches, and teachers are comfortable. That's my generation. My kid generation teaches, coaches, counseling. My aunt wants counseling. Kaoru Kukui is over 600 years of teaching, coaching, and counseling in two generations. Scratch on a lot of other teachers. I don't want to say, well, good teachers, but we are teaching. And so I've been teaching what I teach. I've been teaching for a very long time. I'll end this introductory thing by saying this. My dad taught football mostly and baseball seminars throughout the Hawaiian Islands, even before Hawaii was a state. When I was 13, I went, well, when I was about eight, I became a demonstrator, an assistant teacher to the seminar. When I was 13, we went to Waimea, baseball seminar, about 30 kids, about eight coaches. We were ready, ready to start, we were like this. We so we so. Run the seminar and the coach will okay. How would you feel if at 13 you get 30 kids and you got to run the whole seminar? Well, I've done it for five years. I don't know how to do it. First thing you do is find out where that sun is and you move on from the other thing. First thing. The second thing you do is what? Get your breath. What? What? Wind. So your voice carry. With the wind. Then you line them up. The other one, get out. The next row, kneeling. All that's good, standing up. Pretty good. Then everybody has a name to the seminar. White glass, that's your name. The seminar. Right? Mr. Mask, that's your name. Red or all shirt, that's the name. I don't need to know your name. I'm going to make correction on uh, Mr. Red Outlaw shirt. You know your name. I don't need to walk over there. The other thing is, if you were in a stand that I need to correct Mr. Red Outlaw shirt, and this leg should be behind, I go over there and Mr. Red Outlaw go. If you look at that leg is back. I'm going to do that once. <laughs> One hour later, I'm over there, I'm looking. Mr. Red on our shirt. I did do that. Back. His leg is memory. No need to talk. His leg is memory. The leg in his memory goes, I know I'm supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> a gentleman, a master teacher. Master. And when any uh, any time I have to give an important uh, uh, what I consider to be an important presentation, like Tuesday. And I had a three hour warrior seminar with the UH college basketball team and volleyball team. 
to me all about it. First thing my dad is this whistle. This whistle, it was around uh, my neck 60 years ago. I've been a teacher with this whistle for 60 years. I'll tell you something. My dad, detail. What kind of whistle is this, you think? What make is this whistle? How many of you coached? How many of you have used a whistle? The coach. Yeah. What make? Is your whistle? And that's it. Don't buy any, don't buy any whistle. Buy a real whistle. This whistle is an Acme Thunderbird. It's made by the Acme Whistle Company in England. They've been making whistles for 120 years. They know how to make whistles. That's my dad. Detail. Guys. That's what it is. Well, it's too important. I got my whistle. Okay. Now that I've given you spend more of the time than I wanted to, at least you know where I'm coming from. Because what I'm gonna tell you very quickly about leadership, I put together for myself. And I've talked for decades. So we're gonna start with this. My five principles of leadership. First principle, leadership and influence. Simple, not complicated, leadership is influence. If you can influence, you have leadership ability. It says nothing about your character though. Hitler has leadership ability. First principle, leadership is influence. Second principle of leadership, leadership involves influencing yourself and others by affecting what I call FAT, FAT. Feelings, actions, and thoughts, FAT. As I remember, it was bad. So the first principle of leadership is what? Influence. Leadership is influence. Yeah. The second principle is leadership involves influencing who? Yeah. Who? So, 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 so and others by affecting yeah. that feeling, feeling action, and thought. Uh, it's your That's who you influence. Third principle of leadership, pretty simple. To say. Hard to do. Good leaders do the right thing in the right way at the right time. Good leaders do the right thing in the right way at the right time. Well, how do you know what the right thing is? How do you know what the right way is? How do you know right what the right time is? Experience and judgment. Good judgment. Where do you get the best? Where you have, where is good judgment come from? That's it. How <laughs> many of you? And put your hand on a hot stove ten times. Put your hand. Not that smart. <laughs> Not that smart. Set. If you're over five times, I don't know. You're going to be in remedial cooking class. <laughs> so we learn these things through education and experience to do the right thing, right way, right time, and good judgment. From education and from experience. And not everybody does that. We you know people, they don't do the right thing by the way like that. They went on a very good leader. Fourth principle of leadership, that was the third. Fourth principle of leadership is the path to leadership is through service. Somebody once said, service is the rent we pay for taking up space on earth. You gotta pay your rent. So the path to leadership is through service. So I'm going to tell you some more, they're going to take us to the classroom, I'm going to make it two sides. One small one to me. You get to the door, it's going to be greeted by a look over the top of the door. It says, enter to learn. Simple, three words, enter to learn. And then a Korean, he can get to go out, okay, I'll follow them for once now. Turn around, I'm going out. I looked at the side over the door. Same door, only one door. Two sides, three words. Leave to serve. Enter to learn, process, enter into your life to learn, lead to serve. I thought some things like this is really good. <laughs> you don't need a lot of words to figure this out. Six words enter to learn, lead to serve. What principle of leadership for me then is, is 
that the path to leadership is through service. Learner development is through service. And then the fifth principle is that great leaders, we're not talking good leaders now, we're talking great leaders. Great leaders teach others to lead. Great leaders teach others to lead. Yeah. My dad said that you know, good teachers we have today. My dad said, when you teach something, you teach them the skill, the knowledge you wanted to learn, and you should teach how to teach it. You should teach how to teach it. But you should be making teachers. He said, they will come when you give a drill, football drill, football and wrestling. Back in all the other things I did, high school, early 1970s, head wrestling football. <laughs> he said, someday will come, you go watch one of your athletes coach. You're going to see the same drill, run in the same way, with the same terminology. Then you know that you have written upon that, that afternoon, the things, that drill, and he knows how to teach it. So when I usually teach five principles, we'll do this week with first principle, uh, um, on, the, on the next set. But what I, what I usually teach that, the way I teach it is, the first principle of leadership is leadership is influence. I say it, you say it. Leadership is influence. Leadership is influence. Leadership is influence. And when I got young people, if I get the first response like I got out of you, I say, I say, you all say it. Because half of them figure I'm not coming to them. Yeah. First principle of leadership is leadership is influence. I say it, you say it. Leadership is influence. <laughs> Second principle is leadership involves influencing oneself and others <laughs> by affecting back, <laughs> feeling back in the thought. Exactly. The third principle of leadership is good leaders do the right thing in the right way at the right time. Good leaders do what? The right thing, the right way, the right time. Usually, when I go about somebody gets wrong order, you know I go? No. no, I don't want the right thing, the right time, the right way. You say, why does it matter, Tom? I said, because this is my mantra. <laughs> <laughs> this is the way I teach it. <laughs> so, you follow my mantra. Later on, when you're not teaching with me, what the what are any of you are? <laughs> but if I hear somebody tell me put the good leaders do the right thing in the right way at the right time, probably they're one of my students. What principle of leadership what? That's that's a good service. What did I say about that? Uh, the path, uh, the leadership uh, is uh, and the first principle, great leaders do what? These are five principles. I come to those five principles after like 50 or 60 years of teaching, being around great leaders, and understand what's important to me. Now, other teachers may find other principles. But today I'm the iron chef, though. I'm the cook. So I cook leadership my way. And you know, we be polite and somebody cook for you. At least taste it, right? We'll speed it out while the food's still there. <laughs> All right. I'm going to switch from five principles to five attributes. Five key personal attributes of leaders. Are there only five? No, nah, 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 hundred. But I picked my five over here. And to make them easy to remember, or hard to remember, they all start with C. They all start with C. Now, when I finish, some of you, maybe one or two of you, as it happened in every class, come up to me and say, Tom, oh, you know, you're five C's of leadership, they're good, but I got a Q and two Z's for you. You got to add to your list. <laughs> and since I'm open minded, I tell them, you make your own freaking list. <laughs> <laughs> this is my list. <laughs> Here's my list. And I'll teach you a list of the five C's, generally in order of my importance, the way I don't really teach it. Okay. The first C, is over your heart. Character Pono. Say it in the way. Character Pono. The first C is character Pono. Character Pono. We're talking character, we're talking ethics, a code of ethics that's consistent 
in the community where you live. Now, some of you may have a reputation as being a character, but it's different from being a character and having character. Okay? And there are people who don't know the difference, but you know the difference. Code of conduct consistent with where you live. We don't live in caves, we live in other human beings. We got to conduct ourselves in the right world. That's what conduct means to conduct you. Character is what you do and how you act and nobody looking. But nobody's going to call you on it. Yeah. Character is the important thing. Thomas Jefferson says, in matters of fashion, swim with the current. In matters of principle, stand like a rock. Okay. That's not a character. So the first C is what? Character. 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 Okay. And I teach it this way because Physical, mental, together, human That's the way human beings work. Right? It's an easy fighter, got the waterfall. You don't need to do this to sing that song. You keep doing it because I remember it's part of the, the whole deal, right? Second C is courage, four. Courage, four. We're not going to do this. Do it. Courage, four. That's the second C. Courage, four. Courage. And courage is not the absence of fear, because if you have no fear, you'll be extinct as a dodo bird. Uh, fear, worry, helps uh, uh, preserve us. Okay, the courage is sometimes being afraid, real courage, and acting anyway. This is my best story of courage. There was a storm in California, all the drainage ditches were full. Boiling, bubbling, deep runoff, brown water. Guy goes out on his back porch, his backyard went right up to the uh, down into the on the other side of his fence, fence was here, he's a drop off to the green exist. All of one energy. So they get a cup of coffee and leave the table. He looked out. Next Partial next over in the backyard, uh, Emily, uh, the Ethiopian girl, playing with the ball. Even the ball was all about to be on. So he watches her, really quickly, quickly. You know, all of a sudden, you see a ball bounce over a properly lined fence, and it lands between the fence, and like a three four foot in the dock. And he knows immediately what's going to happen. She's going to go over the fence, get a, get a ball, and she may fall into it. Feet. He tried yelling at her, the wind too strong, puts his thing down a bit. And just as he gets to his feet, she's over a fence and she's trying to get the ball and pull it. She caught him in the street. <laughs> he dashes, but she's coming this way, right? On the street. He dashes to the fence, he leaps over the fence, there's one hair popping, you know, I'm dying, you know, I grab her by the hand. Oh, the black dog, the ball. The fireman fished him out two miles downstream. Amazing, they're still alive. And they're hanging on to her. And somehow they bobbed their way down there. They fished him out in the hospital. Well, he's in the hospital. He's loose now, right? Because he's a hero. So they take the, uh, I don't know. You're a hero. Yeah, you're a hero. Yeah, you're a hero. You take a good life. Were you afraid? Of course, I was afraid. <laughs> you know what I when were you most afraid? He's trying to figure out where, like, did you drown? He said, When I jumped in. Why then? He says, I can't swim. Because I can't swim. Wow. I tell you what, I like to think of a brave guy, and I had my fair share of courage. I don't know how to bullshit myself. I wouldn't know why. I'm going to call a fire to go get But you know what? Like I had character. <laughs> you didn't know it, but you understood the third principle. <laughs> you got to do the right thing in the right way. 
There was only one time, and he was there. He's a brave man, huh? That's the definition of courage. So what's the second scene? Again? What's the first scene? Now you're not in the fourth grade, so I'm like you're doing a fourth grade kind of thing. And that's the way I teach it. And you know what? Somebody said, Tom, I feel like a fourth grader. I said, you tell me one thing you remember from the fourth grade. I said, two years from now, I see you in a kind of safe way. I'm going to say, give me one of the five seats. You know what I do about courage core. <laughs> Um, let's see. Character photo. Yeah. You know what? All right. There's another C. Third C. Third C is commitment. Kupa. I say it and do it. You say it and do it. Commitment. Kupa. Onipa. Do it. Kupa. Onipa. are the four extremes of commitment. Now there's in between, but the polar extremes are kupa, which means immovable if you should not move. Onipa means unstoppable if you should not stop. Like I said, there are great issues in between, but kupa, you're getting your moko moko kupa. That should be conveying when you see it, that guy ain't gonna move. You move it to a movie. I that movie. Or when you put the cook towel, right? Put the cook towel in the front. And you're going, oh, there you go. Oh, yeah. If you're on the other side, you should be looking at that and you try to stop them. I'm not going to stop them. So the third scene is what? Commitment. The third scene is what? Yeah, we know that. We should know that. Right? Yeah. So we have character or no? We have courage or we have commitment. Four C is competency. Competency means being good at what you're supposed to be good at. You get it by training, you get it by experience. You can have somebody who has great character, courageous person, good morals, committed to the organization. It doesn't matter if they ask for the whole of the ground. You go follow that person. You go follow the incompetent person. He just ain't going to do it. Nice guy. I mean, we've all been there, right? Oh, a nice guy. You know, I admire his courage. But he's really committed to the organization and to the ground. And he doesn't know he's asking my holding a gun. I'm willing to follow that gun to the back door. <laughs> That's why the four C is important competency. Now, because our people were so good that they had, I just use this. I couldn't use anything, but I just use this. Okay. Competency. Okay. And I say, ma kao kao. Ma kao kao. There are many words for competency. I like ma kao kao because it has preparation in it. Ma kao kao. Competency, ma kao kao. Competency, ma kao kao. Get it through training, you get it through education, and you get it through repetition. I practice Aikido now almost 44 years. So the throw for leading me not answering throw. That throw has been called the 20 year throw. And I just so like practice, maybe say you practice that throw two hours a week. 50 weeks off for, uh, for Christmas, 50 weeks a year. And that's only 100, 100, 100 hours. Right? But let's say you do a number of 20 repetitions in your practice. In your practice. That's 40 a week times 50 weeks. That's 2,000 reps times 20 years. That's 40,000 repetitions. That's why I call it 20 years. I've been practicing twice that long. I still cannot do it right. I don't know how many repetitions I got in. If you practice 20 and you're 40,000, I must be over 150,000 by now. I'm going to get it someday. But sometimes we think in pure competency, 
Oh, I did that a couple of times. I don't want to do that. Well, people who practice arts that have a different view would tell me, you don't want to. I don't care how many times you did it. You did it twice. You only did it 500 times. You did it, what, 10,000 times? Man, one throw. You know how many throws you have? One throw. Call it 20 years throw, 20,000 reps before you do that. That's competence. The last C is compatibility. Compatibility is a lot. It's a guinea. Compatibility is a lot. Compatibility is a lot. Your spirit, if you get it, it's philosophy. Compatibility means getting along with others. Every good leader I know of this is a good people person. Does that necessarily mean that the people all love their leader? No, that's not required. Respect, you're and that's a platoon side, my people didn't love me. I love them enough to take care of them, but they wanted to follow my character, courage, commitment to them, and competency, compatibility, I get ranked for. I get more than me, you get. So I didn't have to worry about compatibility, but I'm who I am. So I have the relationship with them. Okay, final exam on the scene. What is the first C? Second C. Very good. What's the first principle of leadership? Influence. 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 Leadership, leadership is influence. The second thing, uh, excuse me, the second thing is leadership involves influencing who? Yourself, yourself, and others. And others. By affecting that, that, feelings, actions, action, thoughts. Good leaders do what? Right way, right way, right way. What's the path to leadership? What the great leaders do? That's the core to me of, of, the, of the leadership lesson. You have the principle, you get the key attributes, and you can make your list of attributes like I say, however you want. But after decades of doing this, that's where my list more about. And the hierarchy is roughly in the seas, roughly based upon what I think that makes it better. So any question on that? I'll switch to another lesson real quick. But I got this stuff on a five, you have a five. It's a ball I said that you might be able to run it. You want the five one. Uh, Five C's, I got that on the slide. I'll switch gears real quick. It's a quick lesson. Okay. i tell you a story. Many years ago, maybe 12 years ago, about 10, 12 years, I was invited by a social worker to go teach in the prison on Maui. I said, who am I, who am I talking to? Convicted felons, all serious crime, I've been sent to a term of more than a year. I said, okay. And what do you want me to do? Well, talk to uh, them about something that will help them. Okay. Okay, so I go in there. And, uh, and so the first thing is I've decided to teach a lesson on how one uh, changes from a male to a man. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to declare this a whole more. Yes, no. Well, again. Yeah. For social work, it's in that social work. I said, You see, if I'm entirely aware, you think it changed, you want to back it up. Because these are the limits of the Hollywood. And you're not in the Hollywood. All right, so I think the lesson that I taught them. I said, How many of you came into this room and you brought with you a flashlight and two batteries? Raise your hand. Oh, well, okay. How many of you? Came here this morning, brought with you a flashlight with the back. Raise your hand if you did. 
שהיא כאן אחת אותי של הצפייה. ‫מודר מסיים, ‫אם היא תקום פה עם פלאש לייט, ‫היא תדעת. ‫אבל אני אעשה לך קודם כול. ‫אני אומר לך, ‫אם אתה מגיע לזה, ‫אני אעשה לך קודם כול, ‫אני אעשה לך קודם כול. 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 ‫גט פאוור או לא מופע, ‫אתה לא מופיע. 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 Everybody say, is translated to be or act like a man. Be or act like a man. That's our problem. Or rather, say to us, That's interesting. How am I going to have to be men? Why didn't the elders say ho kane? They didn't. They said ho kanaka. And in this case, that's translated as being man. And kane is a one word for the male of any species. Oa kane is a what? It's a boar. A filthy kane is a what? It's a bull. It's a male of the species. So we are all Kane. But they didn't ask us to be Kane. They did not advise us to be Kane, our ancestors from my elders. They ordered us, suggested to us that we should be Kanaka. So they made something new between Kane and Kanaka. And the dictionary version of Kane is a male which delivers the seed. Impregnate the female. So we are all Kane. The query to you is Are you a Kanaka? And how do you know if you are or not? Oh, that's a problem, right? There's no test, right? Well, maybe later. So I say to these guys, oh, by the way, I go in there, I find out that I'm taking the TV out. They schedule me doing the TV out. So instead of watching Desperate Housewives, we're going to listen to the judge. You know, maybe the judge will put him in jail. Now they have a jurisdiction of a Maui law, but a judge put him in jail. So I walk into the room, they all look like this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if they're waiting to follow, they'd be off the chair. Okay, so I say, all right, let's try to figure out the difference between a Kane and a Kanaka. Because you cannot. Become a kind of Kanaka if you don't know what it is, and if you're all male and we're going to be men, what's the difference? You got to start somewhere, right? I said, okay, by the way, I made this lesson up just for that. I will use it in the trust here. Okay, let's start with Kane, male of any species. <clears throat> I propose to you. <clears throat> that a kane has three primary motivations. Uh, their impulse control is not that good. So I'm trying to tell them, don't get it out. Wait, raise your hand. Come, come on. And by the way, this is kind of a test. And most of you did not do well with this, but you're going to ace this one. You're going to ace this one. Three primary motivations of male. I'll give you a hint. They all start with a letter F. They all start with the letter F. Alright, because they have no impulse control, about 20 guys, or 12, 20 and 12. So 10 guys scream out at this F. Okay? It's a four-letter word, like an F in a front, a K at the end, and a U and a C in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm gonna run them on the board. I said, yeah, I can already. 
Le tocó un compañero, dice, no te dejes de dar teaching. I said, but you are referring, aren't you, to the male drive to have sexual relations, right? Male, that's not so wrong. Oh, male lion, male whatever. Because if you don't have it, you're going to propagate the species. I mean, you get pleasure, but you got species. More dinosaurs than more, right? Why? Because after all, hit the earth, right? The scientists figured out now, there was a point in time when there were some dinosaurs who might have survived. In particular, there was a male dinosaur and a female dinosaur, and they were the last two dinosaurs. And a male dinosaur said, Man, oh, by the way, let me tell you, I did write a word on the board, I made up my own. Fark. F A R K. Everybody say fark. Fark. I've done that. That was the first F. Fark. Where was that? Dinosaur. Male dinosaur, female dinosaur. Only two left. The fate of the dinosaur rested on whether they could produce offspring. So the male dinosaur said, hey, I'm doing sexy. Let's fart. In dinosaur language. And the female dinosaur said, not an idea I have a headache. <laughs> Boom. No more dinosaur. That's why we have no dinosaur today. The male dinosaur was trying to do his job because he was motivated by the first head. He said, Okay, what's the singing name? Oh, I had a lot of one guy yelled out, Beef! He said, Well, I don't have to do about beef. So, like, tip? Uh, what kind of beef are you talking about? What kind of beef are you talking about? Fine! I said, you know, the F is in the wrong place, but it's okay. <laughs> I give it out. Because you mean fight and then fight. That goes right to the net. Fight. The stocks are on again. Why do male animals fight? For some reason. Why do they fight? Yeah, they are. Yeah. They dominate to let they fart. <laughs> and secondly, status. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's so fun. Because you get that that's what you do. That's a boy, boys do, kids do. Girl kids arrange relationship, boys fight. Okay. So the second F is fight. Now we're talking Kane. Okay. So we're going to talk from Kane over here. It's all Kane stuff. When we get to Kanaka over here, you will know by my posture and my place what I'm talking about. I'm talking Kane. So the first half was what? Art. Art. The second act was fight. B or fight. Let's all start over there. Third act. Yeah, good. Food. Food. You want to read this with feed. But for the male, is food. Incoming. Feed myself. You know, the male lion, he don't even hunt. He sleeps, the lion is caught, hunt, kill, the male lion wakes up. Oh, it's time to eat. Go and chase everybody else away. Eat, and then he wants a park after that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a male lion. You probably know some human males like that. <laughs> food, incoming, selfish food. Here's your three F's. That's male motivation, primary activity of the male man. Fart, fight, food. So I said to the inmates, I said, you know, all of you are pretty good at that. But unless you learn to become man, men, I'm going to come back here 10 years from now, you still will be here. You to change your conduct. But I'm going to do that. So you got to change your ex. What? You got to change your ex. What do you mean change your ex? I said, well, this part thing has no responsibility to mute in that. It's just a physical act of sexual you know, contact. You gotta change that F, that F from part gotta change to fatherhood and family. There's responsibility inherent in that. You have to treat your women right. You gotta take care of the kids that you make. You gotta provide for them. And unless you change your F from part to fatherhood and family, you will always be a male or you will never be a man. You will always be a kind you will never reach. Kanakahood. What about the second end? 
Well, second half of pipe, you got to learn to be dead. Rua, second strike, not first. If it's not Rua, it's the first strike, the fight. If it's Rua, it's the second strike. Defend yourself, defend your family, defend your community. Maybe like me, you got to go defend your country. That's what men, that's what men do. So we take the second from five to the family. So now we got the third. I told you, I said I'd revisit the feed. Someone said food isn't coming. We are taking that out to the word feed, which is outgoing. Give your family food. Give your community service. The path to leadership is service. That's the fourth principle. Be. Give up. That's how you get to handle it. So if you're still doing the fart, fight, and food thing, by the way, food includes incoming, more girlfriend, bigger truck, more drugs, or whatever goes incoming, which is selfish, that falls into the food category. Whatever you give out in terms of service and give all yourself, that's a feed category. So now we got it all figured out. Let me finish very quickly here. That in order to become the past from elder to manhood and to become Kanaka, you got to change your ass. There's a gap in between. It doesn't just happen. There's a gap. It's called the gap. My formula is you use the words gap, G A P. First, grow up. That's maturity. That's the G. The A is accept responsibility. What is that? Kuleana. The difference between both life, Kuleana. The last thing I thought about is P, you got to practice properly. How you practice? You know, when I was young, I'm home in Kukuya Elementary, I'm sixth grade, Monolua Bay, with a farmer's truck, they're selling ears of corn, one dollar and a little, six years of corn, six years of corn. Sixth grade, we had that in 1956. Okay. You know, I'm checking my pocket. I got money for candy, making a dollar corn. I decided I don't buy corn and take it home for dinner. I spent my dollar, which I could have spent on candy, to take it home and walk all over the valley. Go to the old valley. I said, Mom, I get corn for dinner. He said, I'm going to be a great. You're going to be a great father. So manhood is not a, a matter of age. I know people my age, they still are not a time. They still screwing around the other end. They haven't grown up. They haven't reached the gap. And yet you can be uh, 11 years old. And practice. What I did, that was a practice. That was one repetition. To practice being a man. And I'll finish with practice. My dad is a basketball coach, Michael. Married up, five foot two inch, Chinese lady, no chance they're going to be that. But he said, okay, you draw a line. You want a line, you a ball on the side, you need to turn your body so that your arm can align with your shoulder, but that cannot align with your shoulder. Everything starts with your knees, softens, leg first, waist, hip, chest, shoulder, arm, wrist, on your toe, high boost neck, starts up there, put the finger in the basket. Okay, line, on the your toe, high boost neck, put the finger in the basket. Okay, great coach. You know what? I still want to shoot people in the top. The premier basketball three point shooter is who? Okay. Steph Curry, right? right now. You know, he shoots a thousand three point every time. Okay. You get some guy with balls and a ball rack and they keep throwing the top and he goes. Repetition, competition. 
of the practice. So if you have to teach, we all teach our age now, right? We we'll teach our students, our children, whoever we're teaching. We got to give them opportunities to practice. We cannot wait to see. For instance, we cannot wait until a, a, a partner's contract happens to be an honorable bit. It just happened to be there. No, you got to find an opportunity. We need corn. What you forget. Give me money, Mark. So where do you think all these food come from that we're feeding? Somebody's got to pay for that. Are you paying for it? No. Go to your piggy bank and buy us some corn. That's a drill, right? On repetition. All right, so I'll wind it up now. Thank you for your attention. That lesson is called the whole Kanaka. I have a slide if you want it that has the part the five of food on this side. It's got the uh, family and fatherhood on this side. It's got the pen on this side as a defense. It's got the food on this side. It's got the gap. It's got the GAP, which is which is the map of how to get there. Simple lesson, man. Yeah? People ask me, how come I never heard anybody teach that lesson before? How many heard that lesson before? Say, yeah. Who do you ask? Yeah, he has. You're the only one. Who do you hear it from? Yeah. <laughs> well, my question is, how come nobody else made a lesson before me? Right? I'm not the smartest guy in the world. And then I ask the next question. I have a female in the room. I've asked females, I've given this lesson with females. Before. This might help you understand your man. But she's male allergic. Oh, you're watching the football team. Football team loses. You don't talk to you anymore. Too soft. That's because this fighting thing is inherent in the competition. That's his army and he lost. And you think he's just a big. He ain't just a big. He stayed up with his being as a competition male. And I say to the women, and you might ask the women in your heart, what is the female equivalent of girl to woman? And I've asked that for years. Nobody's ever come up with a lesson. It's not for me to do it, but for a woman to do it. Which leads me to believe that maybe there's not an attractive potato. Maybe women are so different in, in their way they mature that it doesn't work the way that we say it works. Right? You give me that. It's because of our maleness. That we do the things we do because it reaffirms for us that we are men. No monkeys. They want to know where we are in our status. That's who we are. So our job matters. We lose our job, we lose our status. Yeah. Finish by hiking me this song. Nature did us wrong. Every month, nature tells a woman that she's a woman. It has some magic. She's magic. Life resides in her. Life is created in her every month. They know. We don't know that, so we gotta, we gotta give it up. <laughs> get a job, piece of more money. Get us more status. Make sure give us wrong. Make sure sure for every month, you know, you should, no matter where we were. One time in a month, be sure to have <laughs> That's right, I'm a man. <laughs> but she doesn't. And that's why we're so insecure. And we are. We get our maleness and manhood from exterior self. Things that are exterior to us. Women, interior. They know what we They can online. The things that feed come out of the chest. They have the mind, they know they can have you. Why didn't they to do that for us? I leave you with that thought. Who don't know important uh, important sex? Then <laughs> you made a statement there. <laughs> All right.
Thank you for your attention. Uh, if there's any question, I'll be happy to answer at some point in time. If there's anything you want from me in terms of uh, teaching materials, in terms of uh, and you. Oh.